What is going on everyone and welcome back to Cart 6T3 and I say welcome back to Cart 6T3. Some of you may be new to this channel and uh, thank you for stopping by for the first time. My name is Ben in case you didn't know or like I said if you're the first time here now you're just finding that out. Um, normally I do this at the end of every video but I'm going to do it at the beginning. If you didn't mind hit a like and subscribe to the channel possibly if you find this in information useful to you. If it's something that you know you, you enjoy my antics on film <laughs> if you could do that that'd be great. So uh, UAS versus Rung What You Brung. Ooh hot topic. Uh, <laughs> which one do I prefer? Which one, you know, it, I can see points on both sides of the fence and I thought I'd make this video up. So um, this was on my list of things to do in my list of videos to make. And then the topic kind of came up. Uh, I did an interview with Josh on uh, Dirt360 TV. Um, I think I can link that down below. I'll try to, it was a Facebook um, uh, interview I did with him a couple weeks ago. But uh, the topic came up and I thought, you know what, now's as good a time as any to go ahead and handle this subject, give you my thoughts on it. Am I going to be completely correct? Mm, probably not, you know, in some people's eyes. But I think I can argue both sides of the story and there, there, there is a, there, there's a way to come together type of thing. So um, I'm going to collect my thoughts. I'm going to come up with some topics here. Uh, we're going to do some segments and discuss those. And then, uh, yeah, we'll do a conclusion like we usually do here. So, all right, uh, give me a second. I'll get my thoughts collected, and I'll be right back at with you. Be right back at, be, be, be right back there with you. Something like that. Okay, see you in a second. <laughs> okay, two of the topics I think I would like to cover here, which are probably the biggest things that you can think of when you're discussing UAS versus wrong what you brung, and uh, that would be the engine package allowed, and that would be the body work allowed. Now, uh, we're, right now, I think we'll take the engine package. We'll discuss that for a, a quick second here. Wrong what you're wrong is just that. Whatever you could fit possibly on a cart is good to go. So if you want to run a, I don't you know, uh, my boss is huge into uh, snowmobiles. He has a Polaris. I think it's a 700 now. Uh, the... Uh, I couldn't tell you the, the, the model of it, but it, it's a 700cc two-stroke, basically. So if you can get that onto a cart, as heavy as it may be, wrong what you brought. You brought it, you got it on your cart, go ahead, knock yourself out. If you want to build a, you know, a four-stroke, your typical MX450, uh, if you want to build it to a, you know, a 550cc, you want to build a 600cc, whatever the, you know, the, the bore would go up to, if you want to put a small black Chevy piston in it, run that thing totally understand i totally get that that kind of dynamic of you know i'm i'm gonna put as much juice on this thing as i possibly could have and i i think it's awesome you know i i you know there's no secret here i used to be a uas administrator uh just a couple years ago uh part of ways not nothing nothing bad or anything like that just needed a break from it um I, th there's never been a time when I've said, man, that is just too much horsepower. So I totally get the wrong what we run, guys. You know, they want to put whatever it is on their on their cart they can fit and just try and make it work. Snowmobile engines, the air cools, the twins, all that stuff. I totally understand it. Now, when it comes down to it, I have UAS legal engine. So that's, I think it's 510cc, uh, Four stroke, uh, now 300 cc two stroke. I believe the the rules have been adapted uh, since I was last administrator. But I can tell you, I have a 250 and a 272 stroke YZ250. They're Bama's, uh, Bama 250 Buller built, and I can blow the tires off of it. So that's 250 cc's, and I can just smoke the tires on it. So at 250 cc's compared to uh, say a 700cc snowmobile engine, <laughs> it might be a little overkill. Uh, the comparison I believe Josh had on uh, Dirt360 TV was the open guys versus the crate guys in, in late models and stuff like that. Um, that, you know, these guys just pour all this money. They want to get gobs of horsepower um, compared to the crate motors, but the crate motors are faster through the center corner. They're lighter. They're, they're just more manageable horsepower. So I can see both sides. Listen, you know, I, uh, Evan C 
is one of just single-handedly one of the fastest guys on a go-kart in the United States right right now, and he runs a 150cc two-stroke. Yes, he is light. He makes weight at the whatever 350 pounds it is, but it it just it just goes to show you that sometimes overkill isn't absolutely necessary. I totally get it, and uh, I, I know that you don't want to conform to a, a rules package. I, I understand that as well, but you know when it comes down to it. Once you, you know, surpass, you know, the 500cc uh, four-stroke, the 200cc two-stroke, or 250, 300cc two-stroke, I mean, you're just, you're not, it's not a drag strip, man. You got to turn eventually, right? They, these are oval carts. I mean, unless you're running on a, on a, uh, a road course, um, there there's something to be said for just, it's not a drag strip. Uh, you, it's great to beat the guy, other guy to the corner, but you, if you got a handling cart with a smaller engine, tendency is that you're going to slip inside you're going to whoop, through the center of the corner and end up eventually leaving the guy so uh that's my thoughts on the engine package again i have i have zero issue with you know don't like i said i don't think it'll ever come out of my mouth that man i got too much horsepower here uh it's, i don't i don't think that's gonna ever ever happen but yeah regardless so there's my thoughts on the engine package Okay, body work. Uh, this, in my mind, is probably one of the bigger issues, uh, in, in my mind, you know, it may not be, may not be in other people's, but one of the bigger issues that rung what you brung guys have against UAS guys. So in UAS, we have a certain length, a certain height, a certain, you know, where your wing can be, this and that. The, the idea is for safety's sake. The idea is for sight. Um, it, the idea is not to have a four-foot wedge out on the, on the class where the driver can't see anything. And the rules have been adapted over here. So those of you who don't know, the wrong word, wrong guys, if this is the first you've ever heard of it. So Mark Bergfeld, the, the head of the UAS, the, the figurehead, the guy who started the whole thing, he does... Did, he may have initially started the rules, but since then they have changed. And the way the system works now is that every two years uh, there is a vote. So you have the UAS rules that that, that are, are stated as such. Um, anybody can issue a change to it to be voted on. So you take, say, you know, the, the, the height of a height of a, a UAS cart can only be 30 inches, and you want to make it 35 inches. Well. The way the proposal goes over two years is that you write, okay, you send it in to, you know, via text or via message or however it is, however that's email maybe, um, the, the way the rule is stated and then what you want the rule to be changed to. Now, as a whole, all the UAS administrators get a vote and then they, you know, essentially represent their area. So if they're doing their due diligence, they talk to people in their in their region and then they get an idea okay these guys would be for 35 inches and then the the administrator should vote accordingly or you know put his two cents in you know hey, maybe this isn't safe or this or that but that's how it works I, you know mark doesn't willy-nilly just make up rules type of thing it is uh, uh kind of a representative republic now the way administrators get a chance to vote doesn't mean they always vote where their constituents eh, you know that remains to be seen but the, the concept is there that, uh, you know, I, for one, uh, will take this as an example. I was the penman for the two-stroke rules for a whole bunch of years. <laughs> the whole, uh, uh, what was it, uh, 200 to 250 cc, had to weigh 400 pounds, and then anything beyond uh, 256 cc up to 275 cc was 430 pounds. That was me. I wrote that. I, I wrote that out. The the other administrators voted on it. So they said, "Hey, you know that's a good idea." And it it was it was a long standing rule for the two strokes. But um, as I mentioned before, I think it's gone to three hundred cc. So that, hey, cool, awesome. Uh, I got no problem with that at all. But like I said, more horsepower is great. So the bodywork issues that that come into play is 
they're they're not there to admonish anybody's ability uh, of, of body work. But honestly, I was an administrator for seven years, and I saw some goofy stuff. I saw some dangerous stuff, and you know maybe I said you know I would in jokingly pass. Maybe it was a local show or something like that. Uh, be like, hey, <laughs> you can't have big pieces of aluminum you know, sticking off the front of a car. You can't, you know, the sideboards, the, yes, I get it, you know, the cars race and those things, but they have a little more, little more real estate between the driver and other people. If you have this big, you know, uh, say a, a splitter and you make the splitter out of aluminum, that's dangerous. If you hop a wheel, that's, you know, that, that's a knife, man. That's, <laughs> that is no good. And you think, well, Ben, that's kind of ridiculous. It's not because you know darn well that there's people out there that do just that stuff. Like, ah, we don't run in bubble wrap, you know, hey, we're not going to run in bubble Yeah, well, we also don't want to kill each other either. So there has to be a reasonable, you know, uh, area that we can both agree that that would be great. I, I totally get it. That's the wrong what you brung. So you make that blade up front. You got the splitter that's aluminum. You got, uh, you got the front wing that's just, it's in your vision, but man, it makes your cart handle, but you can't see anything. And that's, you know, it could be dangerous. Now, the problem I see from UAS standpoint, um, I kind of ran into in the 2020 Grand Nationals. And, uh, you know, it, honestly, it was, uh, it, 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 it ticked me off quite a bit. So there's this box and there's no gray area, uh, no gray area whatsoever. That bothers me uh, because we had my, my cart, for instance, I have pull through, clears underneath. It's not too long or anything. Well, the top of the wing happened to be three inches over the rear bumper. Okay, that is not a performance advantage. That is not a, a safety advantage. But yet, I had to move the whole wedge for you know forward, so I had to drill more uh, holes in the thing in, in my side panels to get the whole wedge up. Then my head was hitting the wing because my bumper wasn't far enough back. But I had heard that people might have, you know, some kind of uh, a little loop on their rear bumper, or maybe they had a lock collar on their rear bumper, and they were good to go because that lock collar was considered part of the rear bumper. Now, I totally understand it. Hey, this is black and white. You were coming to the Grand Nationals. You know what the rules are. You know you should be in this box. But it's also really, uh, really, that's, that's my... My wing being uh, at 27 inches uh, above the rear bumper, hanging over just ever so slightly. My front wing, for a ma matter of fact. Now, that's, this is something that probably should be addressed in UAS rules, is that the front wing can't be any higher than the uh, the steering uh, spud, the, the, or, uh, where your steering attaches. And it's fine and dandy. No problem. I had that. But the wing plates exceeded that. So they were too high on my backup cart. So I ended up having pitched the uh, the wedge off there because I have no means of you know recreating side panels for those. That, that is that considered part of the wing? Because a wing is a wing. Now are, are the side panels, whatever you call those things, are those considered part of the wing? Or does that fall within the 15 inches at the front axle? They, they, that's something that needed to be addressed. But at the time, it was my backup cart. It's just, it's just something that stuck in my head. I do not like... The UAS is, you know, black and white thing. I know better now that, hey, I'm going to uh, Georgia come come the fall, um, that I have to fall within this black and clearly black and white box. Do not exceed this. No matter how kind of ridiculous some bumper rear bumpers look, do not exceed this. Uh, I disagree with that uh, wholeheartedly. There should be gray area. It, if, if it isn't dangerous, it, if it isn't a, you know, elite, illegality of a performance advantage you know like use a little discretion like all right that's you're good um so like i said i can i'm trying to argue both sides of, the, of this fence it, it doesn't mean that i'm on both sides but i can understand why the wrong what you wrong guys don't like that type of stuff they don't like the rules uh so uh for body work it, it, that's that's what we're talking about here so all right uh let me let me gather my thoughts i just rambled on there for quite a bit um, and uh, I'll come in with a conclusion here. Okay, in conclusion, 
we are all open carts. Uh, <laughs> the the animosity between the wrong what you're wrong guys and UAS guys doesn't need to exist. I know why it exists, and honestly, I'm not I'm not picking on them because I understand your arguments. But it it exists on one side. The wrong what you're wrong guys have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder that. What they have built doesn't fall within UAS specs, therefore they can't run it. Um, we have different series, and it, dude, more power to you. If you're running these money shows, if you're getting together and you're having run what you're brung series and, and, and tracks are allowing it, awesome. I think it's amazing. I think it should be covered in American Muscle Car. I think it should be, you know, screaming the hill, hey, check these things out. These things are awesome. It's possible to have two classes. I watch Supercross. They don't let the 450s run with the 250s. They have different rules. They have different engines. It's it's two different classes, and it's perfectly fine. Now, what I do think would be awesome is UAS versus Rungo Ibum because I personally think that UAS, because we're at the in my in my opinion, we're at the the absolute most that the rear tires on a cart will take. We are at the most horsepower. And the you know you're not going to gain that much more by having you know maybe body work you know arguable um, you're not going to gain that much more beyond what UAS will allow for body work as a package. Um, but there is no need for this this battle. It, two things can exist. Two forms of open cart racing can exist cohesively. I think the UAS versus wrong what you wrong. There there was mention of it. Uh, Chris C said something about that, that on Friday night at the Grand Nationals, I don't know if it'll come true or not, but a UAS versus wrong what you brung at, at uh, GKK, that would be phenomenal. But my bet is that a UAS legal ride might win that because once you exceed a certain amount of horsepower, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of you know body work you're going to have on it. I think that um, it's not going to there's no advantage there. It's just my opinion. I, I you know, I, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe on 700 CC, Polaris goes out there and just spanks a field, and then I gotta eat my words. It, it's happened before. I have been wrong before. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I, I don't think the, uh, I get it. I get, I, I, again, I totally understand. You, you don't like being told what to do. I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> I really don't. Hey, that's illegal. Why? And then, you know, it's just like, well, it's here, you know, clearly in the rule book that it, it's illegal. I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't make much sense. So it's, <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm still a little rebel. I mean, I'm almost 45 years old, but I'm, I'm still a little bit of a rebel. You know, I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Um, I hope I kept this as lighthearted as possible. It's because sometimes I see it come up and th there is attitude against, you know, the, the, the uh, this class and you know we can't I can't run there because of my body work or my engine or this and that just know we are all open racers we're all nuts there's way too much horsepower to be putting on a cart uh we don't have to be enemies uh I I, I totally understand the argument from both sides and maybe you know from the UAS standpoint there's nobody in UAS just like why can't these guys just follow the rules I don't think that's a thing I don't <laughs> I think it's mostly with the guys that want to have their body work as big and tall and, and wings and, and, and uh, you know, motors. They want to do it their way, and I totally understand. But, you know, that's, again, you know, they, they, they don't allow, you know, uh, in KT100 class, they don't run, let a run 125 reed motor run in the 100, 100cc class. It's just, it's an advantage. It doesn't go. Run a different class. You know, that would be considered an open class. So, those are my thoughts on it. Whether they're right or wrong is really up to you to decide. Uh, like I said, I was just gonna give you my opinion on it, uh, being I'm kind of immersed in it, and I've been racing opens for quite a while. Uh, this is my thought on it. I think both sides uh, do well, have your races, money races, wrong what you're wrong, series wrong what you're wrong, UAS is gonna do its thing. It's gonna have its point system. It's gonna have its you know membership uh, to be in the point system. Uh, I think that UAS rides uh, totally hold hold their own against the wrong what you brung crowd, but I come from that with that world where uh, you know we only go to what what is the rules of UAS. So those are my opinions, and I'm sticking to them. All right, guys, I will uh, catch you in the next video. Later.